You hear me? Good. I have a bit of bad news for you. Elton John is not going to come. It would be me instead. As you see, the setup uh, was, uh, was done. And anyway, uh, I would like to start to apologize for my horrible Italian accent. It will, be, it will add a little bit of uh, pizza flavor to my, to my speech. I hope you don't mind at all. Um, also, I want to tell you that due to too many gin tonics I got yesterday, I feel a little bit cranky and I had to reboot myself five or six times this morning in order to get up. So probably I will have some problems in speaking English, which is not my favorite, uh, not favorite, it is my favorite language. It is not my natural language, sorry. Okay, okay. But just in case I will feel, some, I will have some problems, I can start to talk in Russian. I hope you don't mind, okay? Anyway, let's start with a quick question. Who owns a GSM telephone? Raise your hand, please. Okay, you don't? Jesus Christ, you're rare. Can I touch you? <laughs> okay. Second question, who owns a GPRS telephone? Cool. An evoluted audience. And third question, who owns an UMTS telephone? Silence. Nobody? Well, believe me, if we were in Europe, probably it was impossible to find a guy like him, Fred Flintstone, who doesn't own a cell phone, then you will explain me how can you manage, because it's really impossible. And probably most of the people in Europe, they don't own a GSM telephone. Most of the people, they own a GPRS telephone, and many people already own own a UMTS telephone, as this new standard is already active in Europe, and especially in my country, Italy, it's already working. And these telephones are very nice, because you can do video conference, two and a half megabit of internet connection, fixed IP, basically, you can do a lot of stuff. And today we will talk about these new technologies, like UMTS telephone, also about home automation. Does any of you have any home automation system home, like X10 or something? I saw hand, one, two, three, okay. Um, and also we will talk about web defacement. You might ask yourself, what, what, what the hell these three topics have in common? Actually, they have a lot, and we will understand very soon why. Because they are the, the introduction of UMTS telephone and, and uh, uh, the uh, home automation systems will be the extension of the hacker playgrounds in the future. Okay? Now, something like this might look funny to you, but believe me, it's going to happen. Web defacements are considered up to today as the defacement of the website which is mounted on a web server somewhere in a, an office. But the introduction of the UMTS telephone uh, uh, protocol will allow you to have your own personal web server. And because web blogging is becoming more and more popular, believe me, the people, they would like to start to take pictures or to shoot the, the short movie with the telephone at the disco and to put them straight on on their own personal website so that people will come to visit the website and they have the things up and running pretty much in a fast time. Uh, before talking about this kind of technology, I would like to talk a little bit about Zone H. Some of you know about Zone H, some not. Zone H, it is one of the few left uh, defacement archive very much on the style of attrition, uh, all dust, safe mode, and so on. And we use it as an excuse to check the uh, vulnerable status of the internet. Why? It's very simple, because web defacements are a lame crime, and I do agree with you, but it is, it is a very visible crime. I, I might say the only visible crime. Therefore, tracking Web defacements, uh, keeping records, allows us to, to uh, build up very nice statistics uh, 
And because web defacements are conducted usually using techniques which are the same techniques used to do serious crimes, for us doesn't make any, any big difference. I want you to pay attention to this graph. It is the number of attacks we put in our archives since January 2002 on the left, and on the right it is May 2003. As you can see, we were able to receive notification of web attacks in January 2002 at a rate of 1,600 attacks per month, while two months ago we received 25,273 attacks. And the trend is clear. Now, you understand yourself that it's going to raise and raise and raise and raise and raise. And we, und we will understand why it will raise and raise and raise very soon. Um, for those who are part of the job, this is, in this graph, it is representing the attack method we were able to track. And if you see the first two voices are known vulnerability and patch system and configuration slash administration mistake. Together they are more than 55% of the time. It means that more than half of the time it is the administrator fault if the server gets attacked and compromised. Some other times, for example, what is happening during these days with the new MS RPC uh, zero day, it's not your fault. You can't, do uh, you can't do nothing. The patch has been just released. You, you didn't install it yet. Maybe you're not very well informed. Or the patch has not been released yet because it's happening. So uh, this graph represents the reasons of the web attacks. And as you can see, the purple line uh, describes the uh, for fun. So uh, crackers are hacking websites more and more for fun. But I, I would like you to put attention, to pay attention to the blue line. The blue line represents the political reason. And as you can see, we have two spikes in this graph. One spike at October 2002, which is the anniversary of 11th of September, and a spike beginning of February 2003, which is the Iraq war, when we started to talk about the, the war in Iraq. So politically motivated web attacks are growing and growing and growing, and they will be more and more present in our life. This graph represents the defacement divided by operative system. An interesting uh, fact it is to notice that by January 2003, uh, Linux system started to be more attacked than Linux system, Linux system than the Windows system. The Linux system are the blue line, the Windows system is the red line. Usually, it has been always the opposite. And this was by taking the number of attacks by host name. And taking the number of attacks by IP address, still we have, we can see that Linux system are again more attacked than Windows. So the question, is Linux more attackable or attacked than Windows does have a sense only if you consider the raw numbers of the attacks. But actually, you can't build any statistic. It doesn't have any sense to make any statistic about the vulnerable level or, or, or of Windows and Linux, because it depends very much uh, by the moment, actually, uh, new exploits are released, by the personal taste of some hackers, I know some crackers, I know some crackers which are just attacking Windows, some others are just attacking Linux by personal preferences. It doesn't have any sense to make a real, to build up a real statistic on this. And cyber fights. We have seen a lot during the last year of cyber fights. When we are sleeping, actually a lot of things are going on on the net. And the five hot topics about cyber crimes, they were related to the war in Kashmir, so Pakistan and India, they were Pakistani crackers and Indian crackers fighting each other and occasionally, or even more than occasionally, attacking American servers. Then we have something related with the war in Iraq and 
as you can see, a lot, of course, of attacks were towards the United States, especially Brazil. Brazil is specialized in attacking the United States. I don't know why. But we will see even later, for no reason. Code Red, do you remember? Uh, it was not only the war causing damages, but also crackers that were attacking Chinese and American web servers just to fight because of this, the story of this pipeline. The Palestine-Israel related issue, and again, Brazil is attacking the United States. And finally, the no global, those who are protesting about globalization and occasionally uh, the country that is attacked is the country who is hosting the G8 meeting at that moment. But anyway, Brazil attacks the United States. <laughs> so don't ask me why. So if we put everything together, we understand that there is a big mess. And it doesn't matter where you are, doesn't matter where you live, your web server is still under threat because of any reason, actually. Now let's try to understand why cyber crimes, uh, they will increase. Why the graph we, we saw at, at the first slide will keep growing and growing and growing. The first reason that cyber crimes are convenient because there is a lack of IT laws. Okay, you are the country so far who has the best IT laws asset. My country doesn't have uh, a good IT law asset, though we have some laws. Brazil, they don't have any law. And probably this is the reason. Uh, most of the times the laws are different. And then you have to tell me, uh, maybe we have some lawyer here who could explain, if I am an Italian hacker and I hack the White House, should I be prosecuted by Italian laws or by American laws? Am I committing a crime in Italy or am I committing a crime in the United States? That's an interesting question. Um, the cyber crimes are convenient also because there is a lack of law enforcement international cooperation. The guys are not talking. Uh, the police forces are actually quite jealous. And uh, rather than cooperating, they keep information by themselves. That is not yet full disclosure. And also the fact that ISPs are non-transparent try to go to my country and ask for logs if you received any attack to the ISP. ISP will tell you, go to the hell. I'm not going to give you. <laughs> Pay my bill and shut up. <laughs> so, even the European privacy law is, is forcing the ISP not to release uh, the logs. So, an order from the prosecutor or from the, from the investigator has to be issued in order to have somebody at the ISP level giving you the logs. I think it is more or less the same here. Then cyber protests are very convenient because there is a, a general lack of uh, security. This is not, nothing new, okay. Um, internet is becoming more and more big and the adoptions of UMTS telephones will make internet much bigger, okay? Um, there is no need to protest on the street, and this is a very good point, actually. Uh, when people were fighting on the, on the streets for civil rights, they had to go to the streets. Sun, rain, fog, heat, cold, doesn't matter. They were on the street, and they had to fight with police. Cyber crimes are convenient because you can protest being home and drinking your beer. <laughs> and so, and probably if I hack the White House website, or Al Jazeera, as it happened, website, my voice will be much heard than if I was on the street screaming against somebody. Okay, so it's more effective. Uh, there is no direct confrontation with law enforcement, so I'm not going to be beaten by them, staying home. And finally, the cyber crimes will never stop because there is an inherent slowness of the institutions. 
not because they're dumb, it's because there are so many cyber crimes and they really can't keep the, the pace. The internet is getting more complicated, more installations are coming, more appliances and more subscribers. And finally, and it's very important actually, the software producers are facing a market challenge. So the guys who are writing your uh, Internet Explorer browser are pushed by the management to do it in a rush, in a hurry, because there is competition outside. And then you have to release products at a competitive price, at the, at the right moment. You can't spend billions of dollars in developing a hyper-secure uh, uh, web browser uh, that must be sold then later on at $10,000 per copy and nobody would buy it. So the software producers are forced by the market to release things wi without having the time to proper check uh, what actually the code. And this is actually the last graph I want to show you and it is the defacement uh, by OS operative system and it is interesting because it shows, I just want to, to, to you to point out to the, the attention to the red line, which is Windows 2000. From January to, uh, 2002, Windows started boom, to be safe because the Slammer War. The Slammer War so, was so much uh, 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 public, uh, so many newspapers they were talking about the Slammer War, that the administrators uh, were informed and therefore they were pushed by the media to patch. They patched, therefore the hackers, the crackers, they had less uh, uh, accessible system uh, Windows based. And this sharp decrease means actually that a proper patching help, helps a lot. Patching itself, it's enough. Okay, you don't, you don't need to be a genius to, to, to secure your system. If you properly patch and you just follow the advisories, you do your job as you should do, then your, your, your system might be 95% safe. Now, let's get to the business. Uh, the UMTS telephone, UMTS uh, means Universal Mobile Telecommunication System. Uh, it is the way the traditional hackers limited world will be expanded in our everyday life activity. And now we are going to understand why. First of all, I want to tell you that UMTS protocol will be struggling very hardly with Wi-Fi for a very simple reason. $80 billion has been spent by the telephone companies to acquire UMTS licenses. What does it mean? It means that the telephone operators will force the producer to produce UMTS telephone and to stop to produce GSM telephones. Therefore, even if you don't want, you will buy a UMTS telephone and you will start to use the service, the internet service provider will want to, to, to sell to you, like internet connection, or in Italy, for example, we have already this video conference. We can talk by phone, seeing each other, and for example, uh, you know, we are all soccer fa fans, and on, on, on the weekends, there are, there are people who subscribe to the UMTS um, service just to get the video of the goal as soon as they scored. And it's a pretty good business. It will be on the UMTS platform. You can develop a lot of a lot of services. Now, what is a UMTS telephone? This one. Okay, it's an iPack. It's an iPack, but with a special thing on the back. Now it's a telephone. Exactly like the telephones you see there. The only difference it is that this one doesn't have the webcam, but those they have the webcam. The, the telephone on, on the left is the telephone supplied by default by the Italian telephone operator. And on the top of it, you can see the webcam for the video conference. Uh, the one on the right, it is a little bit more complicated telephone. And actually, the UMTS telephone, they will be like the one on the right. And you can do basically whatever you do uh, today with your laptop. You can have video conference. It is a full multimedia platform. Uh, it's a data bank. You can run uh, your office files. Uh, it's a good mobile computing platform because today they have 400 megahertz processor, which is powerful enough to do your stuff, and web browsing. 
basically you using a UMTS telephone you will have no limits uh, because you can do whatever you do today from your PC just from your pocket now I bought one this is an extremely cool stuff and I want to play a little bit with you can you please tell me who wants to have it raise your hands raise your hands who wants to have it okay now please do me a favor no 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 keep your hands up keep them up watch around you the faces of the one who has who have the, the, the hand horizon and remember it, okay? Because now we are going to play a little game. I need, I need a victim, you. <laughs> come, come. No, 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 you didn't raise your hand. The guy behind. Come, come, come here. Very close. Okay. okay. I'm not gay, it is just a... Oh, you spot this very nice. <laughs> What's your name? Jerome. Okay, a big applause. Okay. I know you hate me now. <laughs> Can you explain why you, t you told me that you want to have this thing? Because one of the things I saw is that it could be powered by Linux. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a Palm OS. Mm -hmm. so, okay. And it's free. Yeah. And, no, 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 no. <laughs> The question wasn't who want to have this one for free. <laughs> the question was who want to have a tele UMTS telephone. Okay. Now I want to play a game with you, and we will play a game with them. First question: What that? Okay. First question: Try to imagine that we have a digital signature card, unbreakable, absolutely secure. Okay, unbreakable. If such thing exists, would you have any problem to using to use it? What happens if you lost it? No, 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 no. The question is, do, would you use it? Would I use it? Probably. I would use it. Yeah. Who would use it? Raise your hands. Okay. Let's go ahead. Would you have any problem into using your digital signature card, inserting it into a computer to authenticate a transaction? My, my answer is, if it is an unbreakable digital signature card, I don't have any problem if such thing exists. You? No. You? Raise your hand. Who would use it? Okay. Let's go ahead. Next question. <laughs> it's just a case that it's Windows. I swear I didn't do it on purpose. Now. Would you like to use your digital signature card to authenticate a transaction through a computer on which is running a weak operating system? No. My hands start to... I need some weight lifting activity now. Who would like to do it? You still would like to do it. Okay. <laughs> you take notes of those. Okay. <laughs> You'll be punished later. <laughs> you are at death con, guys. Okay, the next question. Would you like to use your digital signature card to authenticate a transaction done using a computer on which is running a weak operating system permanently attached to the internet, leaving your digital signature card in it? One guy there. So, but they, are, they are already on the safe side. Next question. Would you like to <clears throat> use your digital signature card into a computer on which it's running a weak operating system uh, permanently attached to the internet wirelessly. The guy there is tough. <laughs> you took it personally. Well, given the fact that all this stuff put together, plus a dumb telephone, are exactly this thing, can you please explain me why do you want to have it? You guys? Uh, it, I, no. Listen, listen, listen. I explain to you. You want to have, I was playing with your mind. because I was playing with your left part of the brain and with the right one. Because when you were telling to me, yes, I want it, this was the emotional part of the brain that was working. Now, the other part of the brain is working and saying, no, I'm rational. I don't want this. But still, if I, so now nobody wants to have this, but still if I would ask who wants to have it, you have to stop your hand. No? 
Okay, now, please pay attention. You are security guys. Security guys, okay? Can you imagine the billions of people out there, which they don't know shit about security, <laughs> now, what will happen to them? What they will install on these systems, okay? And a lot of damage will be, can be created on such system. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Now, let's talk about the danger. Uh, on this handheld, it's, it's mounted Windows 2002 PC. How does it work? It works in a very strange way. Uh, there are two levels of memory. The level, the first level, in the first layer, all the programs are loaded and they are stored in the memory permanently because this doesn't have any hard disk. Okay? And the second level of memory is used as the dy dynamic storage. So when you run a program, that part, the second part, the lower part of the memory gets uh, dimension, dimension proportionally to the need of the software in memory. Um, I don't know if you have a handheld, but if you close, if you run a software and then you close it, pressing on the X, like in Windows, the software closes. But actually, it closes only graphically. The software keeps loaded in the memory, and the data which were processed by the software are still present in the memory. Even if, so for example, you were running an uh, Excel file, so your Excel file stores the, 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 the data on the, on the second layer, and then when you run a different software, the processor stops to pay attention to Excel, starts to run another software, dimension the second portion of the memory, but Excel is still there. So you, when, you, when you come back to Excel, you still find your data there. So the question is, what stupid operating system is this? Actually, it's not stupid because pay attention to what I'm doing. I'm taking away the telephone. Now it's a PDA. And being a PDA, actually it's an ex excellent system because when I meet this guy, and I want to establish a, a meeting or to exchange information. I want to pick up the thing out of my pocket, switch it on, and everything should be already up and running. You don't have the time to boot. That's why the system is built in this way. But the problem is that when this thing becomes a UMTS telephone, then your data were present on, on the second layer of the memory are probably, if the system is not secure, accessible from the internet. Okay, this is one of the most secure, actually before, before the DEF CON was one of the most secure <laughs> uh, uh, PDA because yesterday a guy showed how to break the digital, uh, the fingerprint uh, recognition who is present. So every time I, I switch on the thing, he, he asked me to, to put my fingerprint and actually on the manual, uh, it is explained to you that you have to uh, enroll two different fingers on two different hands because you never know, you might lose your hand. So you cannot, you cannot switch on your thing. It, it is written in this way, believe me. So anyway, it's, it's a fucking secure thing you know, for them. Please pay attention to the right part of this slide. This is the regional settings of Windows 2002 PC. Do you, do you see anything wrong there? What? Currency is backwards. Okay, so the minus is instead of the plus. A little mistake, known already by Microsoft since months, still, I bought this thing a month ago, and it's still present and not patched. And I took it as an example of the um, level of attention Microsoft paid uh, when developing this operating system. So. If there are such errors, and such errors are not fixed, even if the, the issue is known, you can understand how can it be the rest of the operative system. Now, how UMTS works? Very simply, like this is a typical one of the, actually, one of the um, architecture of UMTS, telephone platform, and basically we have uh, the UMTS telephone who transmits the data encrypted to the first two nodes and then because UMTS platform it is built to run on already existing uh, platforms it is hooked on the 
old GSM structure, therefore the data are running non-encrypted. And this is the first conceptual weakness. What is the reason to encrypt the, the signal for half of, of, of the length, then the, 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 the second half of the length, the signal will not be encrypted. And that is why, actually, uh, uh, crackers will attack, rather than attacking uh, 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 the encryption level, they will exploit either the appliance itself or the old, weak, vulnerable points of the GSM structure. And what it is possible to do? Today, on this thing, uh, a cracker could use operative system security flows, assuming that Windows 2002 has someone, uh, through open ports. It's, it's connected to a fixed IP address. Okay? So it's no difference between this one and Microsoft Server where they are. Sending me a virus through a mail, a Trojan, using component flows. This is a Java platform enabled handheld, so using Java application I can load whatever I want. Uh, using web server flows, web servers, yes, web servers, and we will see a very nice example. Or exploiting application level. One thing I didn't tell you before, when we were talking about cyber attacks, we didn't say that it doesn't matter really if the attack system was Linux or Windows, because most of the time a uh, web server gets attacked. It is because uh, the attack was conducted on application level or on database level, regardless of the operative system. The same thing will be here. What kind of damages could I have? Well, if a, if a cracker gets the control of my PC, I hell, I'm in deep shit because I will lose all my information, no? all my secrets will be opened. I can receive denial of service because I have a fixed IP, so my, my, my telephone will be not operative because somebody is flooding my IP address. Or I can be used to, to, to send some denial of service to somebody else. And because the UMTS bill in the beginning will be based on traffic, believe me, you're going to cry at the end of the month. Okay? espionage or eavesdropping. Please pay attention. This is a multimedia platform. If I have control of this, I can use the Windows embedded part of the operative system who controls the speakers and the microphone. I can switch on the Microsoft from remote and listen to everything what you're saying, even if the screen is not showing you anything. And this is extremely dangerous. Uh, somebody could uh, use my thing to do unauthorized banking shopping using my digital card so, and my IP address. It will be a problem then later to explain to the bank, no, I didn't do it. Okay, I didn't buy a yacht or a Ferrari. Anyway, you can understand yourself. No, you are all security guys. Now, a, a nice example. I mounted on this thing, because it's a full PC, uh, SQL. And they mounted the SQL Server Digital Dashboard 3.0 provided by Microsoft uh, up to one week ago on their website, uh, website. And together with the SQL Server, it gets mounted a web server, okay, Microsoft web server. And this is the welcome page uh, of the web server once it is mounted on this telephone. And it is telling to you that allows you to have full uh, uh, authentication, basic authentication. Uh, actually, it is a full featured web server. So I installed it, and the first thing came in my mind, because I'm a good guy, how can I exploit it? And believe me, it took a long time, and it was terrible. But finally, we understood how to exploit Microsoft portable web server. From remote, it is enough to connect to the slash admin, and the default installation lets you in. Do you understand what this means? What? Lets you in. In, in, it means that all, everything which is here, you can see it, because then, once I'm in, and I am the, the remote administrator, it is enough for me to, com to make a configuration to create a, vi a new virtual path, which is leading me to the root of, of, the, of the system, to the main directory, and then from there, I can start to browse. And this is an example. Calllist.dat. This is the list of the calls. So 
Anybody could spy me if I was using my telephone as a web server. Anybody could spy me knowing what kind of telephone calls I'm doing, just simply using a browser, basically. Or there is a, a very interesting directory, which is slash Windows. And this is the welcome page you get. But if you know a little bit of uh, Windows architecture, you know also that the file bioswap swipe dot DAT, it is actually the file with my digital uh, uh, fingerprint image. So an attacker could recover, it, it is encrypted, it's okay, but anyway, why the hell somebody uh, should be allowed to take the image of my, of my fingerprint? This is extremely dangerous. Or this is the mail I received from the DEF CON organizers reminding me about uh, the final details of, of uh, before beginning the conference. So knowing that it is stored in slash messaging, slash whatever, somebody could read the email from a web browser. Okay, so I am ashamed, embarrassed, and disgraced <laughs> to announce you this highly technical advisory. I know I would be rewarded for that. Anyway, I, I warned Microsoft two weeks ago and actually, to be honest, they reacted very professionally. They took offline immediately uh, the web server, so it's not anymore downloadable from, uh, from Microsoft website. And they told me, yes, you're right, uh, we have such vulnerability and we're now fixing it. And all the process was by personal mails. It wasn't any mail robot like in the past answering me, yes, I got your advisory or whatever. So we can say now that uh, it's safe because Microsoft was warned, they took, took it off from the internet, so we can release this advisory saying that the Windows Beta web server for Pocket PC is allowing a full remote access because the default installation of Windows allows an attacker to gain full remote access without authentication, simply logging it to attack host slash admin. Now, <clears throat> privacy threat. What can happen to me besides losing my files. Well, many of these things, I was in Japan a year ago, and they're already selling very much advanced uh, UMTS-like or iMode-like telephones. They have GPS incorporated, and it's a very neat feature, because for example, right after here, I will go to Los Angeles City, which I never visited. And having a GPS into, into system, into this one, would allow me to get the map of where I am, find directions, and Japanese people are really much using this. But the GPS coordinates to be shown to you after having been received, they have to be stored somewhere in the memory. And if the attacker knows where those coordinates are, then you're going to get in deep shit because everybody can track you down. And even without GPS, actually, when, I, when I'm connected to uh, the GSM network, I receive the cell phone ID. And the cell phone ID, it's a unique ID. And the, the cell, it's the, there, maybe 500 meters away from here, and it's serving this area. So if an attacker can retrieve the ID of the cell, can know more or less where we are. And finally, the timing of the wavelength used by UMTS is allowing direct tracing. Uh, in this case, you must be a very professional one with, with a lot of equipment. But if you have such equipment, you can track a person within 20 meters of approximation. So here we have some links. You will find it in the, in the, the presentation. Uh, if you are interested to study this topic, you can, you can go ahead. Now, let's conclude. Home automation. I was selling myself home automation systems uh, and it was a bloodbath, at least in Europe. Uh, I lost a lot of money and I couldn't understand why. So cool thing, but the people, they are not buying it. Besides the fact that they are expensive, the, mo the, the best reason it is that they weren't actually very much interactive, but if you have a telephone which allows you to operate your house from wherever you are, you can even see the stream, the video stream, of what's going on in your children's room if they are studying or playing 
then probably you're going to buy UMTS because you can fully control your house. You have the emotional reason to do it. Okay. And this will be, again, an extension of the hacker playground. Here is the internet refrigerator. It's not a dream. It's not a concept. It's something you can buy today. Actually, it's something you could buy a year ago. In the shop, it is produced by LG Electronic. And it is a wonderful thing. It has a touch screen, uh, um, a webcam, a full internet access, email, video email, voice only, blah, 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 blah. So it's a full computer. Okay? And it is even stated, this is a copy of LG web page. The fridge built in PC is a low spec affair based on 300 megahertz national semiconductor geodic processor, blah, 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 blah. So it's a full PC. Now, the question is, if this is a PC and it is connected to the internet, it has an IP address. If it has an IP address, people here at DEF CON might be very much interested to discover it when it is attached to the, to the internet. Now, the question is, what kind of wonderful operative system is running on this beautiful machine? I, I didn't understand. Yes, yes. Yes, of course, of course. It's cyber stalking, actually. And a and, 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 uh, um, commercial company will, will be very much interested in that. Anyway, always on the producer website, we can see that it runs a modified version of Windows 98. And <laughs> by modified versions of Windows 98, I bet my ass that they mean that they loaded the touchscreen drivers. And that's it. Okay, because nobody can modify Windows 98, not even LG. Okay? Now, you hackers, how would you kill instantly such refrigerator? Can you tell me? Okay, ping of death. <laughs> and a cracker could melt your ice creams in a matter of seconds. <laughs> Now, we are running out of time, and last seven minutes. Um, if you do have an internet refrigerator, then you must have, because you spent $13,500 uh, to buy it, then you certainly are rich, therefore you have a naked wife that in the morning is cooking you the breakfast. <laughs> it's, that's for sure. And I will be very much pleased to get access to the multimedia <laughs> platform, to the webcam of such refrigeration, to stream it to the DEF CON. Actually, the next DEF CON, we can do something like that. We can, we can identify uh, a refrigerator like that on the internet and stream the video coming out. Okay? <laughs> but if you were such tycoon to buy a refrigerator like that, then you can't miss the internet oven. And You guys are laughing. It's going to happen. It was, meant, it was meant to be extreme, a provocation. But you tell me why it shouldn't. Why should, shouldn't an American uh, 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 citizen receive an attack from Pakistan on the Thanksgiving Day? We are already getting those attacks. So why not in my refrigerator or on my oven? So to finish, we can say, are we scared? I can't continue. <laughs> Are we scared? So what system will be invented to keep us safe and to secure our privacy? And is there anyone who can help me to get rid of these techno nightmares? The answer is yes. There is somebody who can help you to get rid of these techno nightmares. <laughs> Oh.
okay. You know, when I was when I was showing this last uh, thing to my Italian friends, they were telling me, "What the fuck is that?" Because <laughs> they, they they cannot pick it up. No, but fortunately you did. Okay. Now I have a compact speed pack cellular PC card uh, that DEFCON will give to somebody who would like to ask questions. I hope you are not going to ask questions because then I am keeping by myself. You. It's a global positioning system, the normal uh, system that you have on your car. Okay, it was easy to gain it. Come here. Come over. Other questions? Excuse me? I didn't understand. You know, excuse me, it's the gin tonics. <laughs> and your accent, and your accent. It's really difficult for me. Can somebody translate me in Russian or Italian? No. Say. <laughs> yes, yes, it can be used. It can be used. It can be used. And by the way, this thing, it is, I didn't say it, it is Bluetooth enabled. It has Wi-Fi plus full fixed internet connection, UMTS. So you understand the owner of this will be in deep shit. Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, I, will leave, I will leave some the name card here if you're interested to pick it up. And you can find myself around. If you want to stop me and punch me, I will be there.